What's up, YouTube? You know what time it is. It's my fan time. That's been a little while. <laughs> For before that, that opening, huh? But um, anyhow, you know what? Uh, I thought I'd mix it up a little on the channel. Um, I'm still going to do my uh, Philly Sports series. And of course, huh? it's coming up. The, the next uh, NFL season and the season of the fan series, uh, which is obviously, you know, one of my... <laughs> one of my um great loves of doing of course for the for the for the uh being an Eagles fan and of course this season is a very special one because you get to you know do it as a defending champion Eagles fan. <laughs> so I'm um, looking forward to that and obviously that series is going to start in earnest in August around the time the preseason comes along. So looking forward to that. But you know what while we have a little break in the action as it were um and I still want to do the um the Phillies jersey series where I show uh, various different, you know, of the Phillies jerseys I have, different styles, different what have you. So I still want to do that. Um, I'm still, you know, trying to mentally put that together. So hopefully within the next few weeks um, I can I can pump that out for you guys. Uh, but, you know, when I, when I first started on YouTube back in, goodness, what was it, 2000 and I, I keep thinking it's 2000 and... It was either late 2008 or early to or somewhere in 2009. I forget exactly the year. I be, I want to say it was 2009. I remember the Phillies were at the time the defending World Series champs, and uh, <laughs> uh, I had that video. I remember with my old camera uh, in front of the, uh, the 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 old closet, the old house. And I was showing some uh, football jerseys, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and I thought, you know, I would kind of get back to the roots a little bit, as it were, and uh, kind of do, I don't want to know, I don't want to, you know, call it jersey review, but maybe it could be. Um, just, you know, just each video in this series, just take a, um, a selection from the collection and show you guys, uh, because there might be viewers of this channel who have never seen any old run Mitchell Ness jerseys. It's not all the jerseys I'll show will be old runs. There'll be some new stuff. And there'll be some, you know, collection of other um, jerseys as well. Not just Mitchell and Ness, but of course, since the majority of the collection is Mitchell and Ness, the majority of the jerseys will be Mitchell and Ness. But I have some old uh, vintage jerseys. I have some custom jerseys. Uh, obviously, as a collector, you just... You run the gamut, you know. So I thought it would be kind of cool to go back to that and also maybe show some people who might not have ever seen them, uh, some of the older Run Mitchell Ness stuff. Um, and obviously you can always, you know, uh, browse my Instagram page. I still don't have all the jerseys up there. Ah, it's taken me much longer than I thought it would when I originally started. I wanted to use Instagram as a way to catalog the collection and for me to get a count of how many... <laughs> for mostly the Mitchell Ness jerseys, how many Mitchell Ness jerseys I have in the collection. And you can find me on there, Mighty Fan, one word, uh, just like it is in my name here. Um, you know, as I call, you know, shorten my name here and when, on the titles of my videos. Of course, my the full name is Mighty Mouse Fan 70, 1978 or something like that. Mighty Mouse Fan 78, something like that. I don't even remember my whole name on <laughs> YouTube. Is everybody, you know, I just go by Mighty Fan all the time, so that's like, okay. That's fine, um, but so I thought um, where I, where I was I going with this? So I thought it'd be kind of cool to kind of retrace the roots a little bit, get back and do some Jersey videos. It might not be pickup videos per se. It's just going to be kind of showing us a, a selection, like I said, maybe eight to ten jerseys a video. Just you know, give you a little backstory of them a little bit, and you know, this is it, and you know, what have you. And it might be boring to some of you, I don't know. But um, these days, obviously, uh, I, I'm still very much a collector. I'm, I'm always on the look. Uh, but there's a lot of things that have been kind of going on in my life right now. Uh, the first being my mom was able to find an apartment, move out of the old house, the big house, <laughs> that uh, we've had for many, many years. And we're actually hoping, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, to be able to sell that house in September. And my mom moves to an apartment in September. She's definitely moving to an apartment. 
in September. So now it's about selling the old house and clearing it out and doing all that good stuff. So that's been keeping me obviously um, uh, busy um, as we are now almost, you know, right down to the, to the wire for this. And it, it, it's a big project and obviously it's something that is time consuming and, uh, you know, nerve wracking at the same time, but I'm very happy uh, if everything works out that we'll be able to move on from the old house, uh, get her to a better place uh, where, you know, she doesn't have to worry as much about things. Uh, and it's a good apartment. It's, it's close by, you know, so uh, that's what she wanted. And, um, you know, I was glad that you know, we were able to find something for her. Now it's about moving her there and then obviously selling the old house. So, you know, a lot of memories in that old house. Obviously, I've been in this house now, my house here for, for a few years. It's hard to believe it's already been a few years. But come October, it'd be two years. And uh, the old house, uh, which isn't far from here, uh, was where I spent most of my life. So obviously, you know, selling it, seeing it go, it's a little sad, but at the same time, it, it's it's needed. Uh, my mom can't stay there. It's it's too big and just too many things for her to have to handle. So I'm glad uh, we were able to get her, uh, a, find her a place, and also move move the house to to hopefully to, to a family uh, who can enjoy it for many years to come. And, you know, that's their place now. And, um, you know, but I have a lot of memories and you see a lot of my older vids, vids on YouTube film there. And, you know, yeah, uh, it's a place, like I said, I spent most of my life there. I'm very happy here. Um, I'm really glad I was able to uh, purchase this home and, and this is my home and certainly it's my home. <laughs> But uh, at the same time, I am happy that, you know, we're able to, you know, move on and, 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 and turn the page, you know, get her in a better place and sell the house to, to, to more people who can who can appreciate it. And that, that's always important. Um, I might have to drive by there, though, every year on Halloween just to make sure they have Halloween decorations. <laughs> Some of my most fondest memories of the house is decorating it for Halloween because that's my favorite holiday. And, of course, now I do it here. But I used to always do it there and you just go all out and everything. And <laughs> So we'll see. But, um, but no, that, that being said, uh, let's get on to the main point of this vid. And it is, again, just to, you know, kind of show some of the collection and, uh, you know, for, for people to enjoy. And, and for people who never saw... Uh, any of the older run Mitchell and Ness stuff and only aware of what they do now, which is still good stuff. Obviously, most of it's made in China. But back in those days, and us, you know, the OG Jersey heads can tell you, back in those days, they, they were made in USA, they were made in El Salvador, they were made in Korea, Vietnam, Mexico, all over the place. And, and some older China run stuff, too. Uh, and the materials were... Um, you know, really, you know, solid uh, variations of it, no matter where it was made, uh, quality. Uh, it, it's not a knock on Mitchell and Ness. I'm still a fan of their brand. Um, I live close enough to the store that, I, you know, I've always said this. I go there for every sale that they have. There's stuff that they make I still want to get. Um, but the older stuff, obviously, for collectors is sought after because, um the quality is there. Uh, the, the, the selection is incredible. I mean, there's jerseys that they made back then. I still don't know. <laughs> they made so much stuff, and they made it for all different players. And what they used to do in those days is they kind of took chances on some players and some jerseys. And they don't do that now because now they kind of play it. I, I don't want to – some people call it playing it safe. And, and, yes, they do. I mean, they try to make stuff that they feel is going to sell. Um, but at the same time, back then, you have to remember back in the, in the, <clears throat> the early to mid-2000s, there's this huge jersey craze. And it's somewhat come back in a way. I know today a lot of people, like one of the styles is like the movie jerseys, you know, and the people, you know, different people, their high school jerseys or something. And actually that was back then too. You saw a lot of those high school jerseys back then. I remember the Oak Hill Academy jerseys and whatnot. Um... <clears throat> excuse me, but, um, it was such a craze and it was because of 
um, pop culture. It was because of, you know, hip hop and the different outlets for that, whether it's rap mu videos on TV. You know, back then they used to have uh, music videos on TV <laughs> or in the magazines. And you would see some of the popular artists of the time. You actually, there was articles from magazines and you see them at the old Mitchell and Nestor holding up different jerseys. In fact, I have the jerseys that they were holding up. <laughs> Action. I kind of want to take a picture of myself doing the same thing with the same jersey that he's, you know, is wearing in the, in, in the ones that, and uh, I, I, you know, match it up with the, I, I might do that someday on Instagram or something, who knows, just for the heck of it, you know, but um, it was such a big thing and it was such a big style. Mitchell and Ness certainly cashed in. They were the company that, you know, people went and they, they made these jerseys at one time for these people and then mass produced it. And it became the thing. I mean, it really blew up <laughs> in the old days. Um, but they made so many jerseys. And they made so many different teams and so many different players. And some jerseys, they made limited runs. And some jerseys, they made, you know, they maxed out. But they just, you know, they were the name, as they are today. But back then, when everyone was buying jerseys, they were... You know the place like you had to have a Mitchell and Ness jersey to be you know to be seen as hip you know so you had all the people wearing Mitchell and Ness product hats jerseys you know it wasn't so much like you see today with like the shirts and the the the, the, the hoodies and the shorts <laughs> and what have you um it was more the jerseys and the hats and the jackets you know the big jackets which I never really got into because it hides the jersey. I don't like to hide the jersey. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it was, that's what it was. And if you went to the Mitchell and Ness store back then, which the first one I ever went to was the one on Chestnut Street in Philly. Of course, now they moved to 12th Street. And before that even, they were on, I, I forget exactly what street they were on, but close to Chestnut, just off Chestnut, I believe. And all you saw was racks of jerseys and a wall of hats. And, 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 a, and a few racks of jackets. They didn't have a lot of shirts out. They didn't have a lot of hoodies. They didn't have shorts. They just they didn't have it, a lot of that stuff out. You know, you can ask for it. Maybe they had it in the back. But their big selling point back then were the jerseys, the hats, and, and you know, to the jackets. But obviously, this time of year, you're not going to get a jacket. Right? It's too hot. So it was just racks of jerseys. And I've told this story before, and I really don't want to just keep, you know, uh, repeating it. But when I first started going to the store, they were really trying to blow out a lot of their older run stuff because it was when they were starting to get into the just China, you know, uh, uh, jerseys and, and what, what have you, attire. So a lot of the older run jerseys were on sale, on sale racks. And year round, you know, you didn't have to have a sale to go there and buy a jersey, right? They had sale racks. They had a like a, wall, a back wall. There was a rack. There were jerseys. There were jackets. You know, different stuff on sale. So, back then, I used to go and maybe pick up every now and then. Not all every time. I might get like a jersey. You know, here and there. And then, of course, the sales. I found out about the sales. Went there for all the sales, and of course, eBay. <laughs> and then some years later, the fellow collectors in the community. You know, you buy from each. You know, different collectors who are selling. So a lot of my really good jerseys, you know, hard to get one. Some of them, you know, a lot of them came from eBay. Some of them came from the store. And then there are a good selection of them that came from fellow collectors out there. So, you know, I'm always appreciative of that, too. In fact, I always say that some of my favorite ones um, that I'm able to get are from fellow collectors because I know they're coming from people like me who appreciate them and take care of them. You know, so I never mind getting them on eBay. <laughs> Or at the store. But, you know, some of the ones that, that always have special meaning are the ones that come from people like me who are collectors and, like I said, appreciators. It's basically from one collection to another. So, but anyhow, I've rambled on here for almost 14 and a half minutes. So, again, the you know, the basic um, uh, premise of this is just to kind of rehash some of the stuff that I have. And just so people can, you know... Uh, either the fellow Jersey heads out there, of course, here on YouTube, or, or just people, you know, passing along and sees these videos like, oh, they did that Jersey? Oh, wow. Yeah. 
you know, it just, it opens the eyes a little bit about what they did. And I will show some of the current stuff too. You know, I'll mix some of that in too. But um, anyhow, let's get started. You know, football season's just around the corner. And I thought I'd start with some football. Um, and then we'll move along. Maybe the next video will be basketball. You know, I'll mix it up. I won't do the same stuff, you know, every video. So anyhow, start with what I'm wearing. This is the older run, career run. Uh, Randall Cunningham, White Eagles jersey, circa the 1992 season. And it's got the Jerome Brown Memorial patch. And this is an old Korea run. And sometimes the old Korea white jerseys, whether it was football, whether it was basketball, uh, with this mesh material, sometime, over time they, they tend to yellow. <laughs> so at one time maybe this was crispy white and right now it's a little you know it's yellowing a little bit not too bad there's others that are worse than this but it's just how it is it's just whatever reason it's something in the material whatever it's just the white jerseys and it's football and basketball the mesh jerseys they tend to they tend to yellow and again it's the career runs that do it it is what it is there's really no getting around it sometimes but um you know it is what it is but it's still a very nice jersey, and the quality is really good. Um, and again, I'm not I'm not really a hater of the new stuff. I mean, I do go to the store. I've mentioned this during their sales. I still buy their new stuff, you know, when I can, uh, if the sale's good enough, obviously. But the old stuff, again, the quality, just the look of it, particularly for the football jerseys, it, it's it's hard to match, you know, that with what they do now. But again, I'm not a hater. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, so let's start it off here with, um, this is a more recent pickup, but um, Denver Broncos, Tom Jackson. And I remember seeing this years ago at the store, and I never did pick it up, but uh, my buddy uh, Big Slim, of course, got it back in the day during, during that sale, and I never did pick it up. And I uh, had a chance at it on eBay, so picked it up there, used my eBay buck certificate for it. Help me get it. Uh, this is a newer run, uh, China, but it's you know good quality. Uh, Nineteen was that seventy seven? Yeah, seventy seven. Tom Jackson, and then you got the jock. This actually still has the the tags, but I, I don't keep the tags. If I wear the jersey, the tag comes off. I know a lot of people keep their tags on their jersey for resale reasons. I can't see a reason why I would resell any of this. I mean, this is my stuff. It's staying with me for the foreseeable future. So the tags usually come off, but if I wear it, ah. Uh, but it's all screen pressed on as the Broncos wore back then to the stripes, to the numbers. This is also the jersey that, uh, if you ever see Big Baby's videos and he does his uh, snap into a Slim Jim and you see Big Slim, it's, this jersey he's wearing in that picture. <laughs> So, but, um, very cool jersey. I, I, I was talking actually to Big Slim on the phone uh, earlier, and I'm like, man, I, I forgot how nice this jersey is, because it really is. And I love the heat press jerseys, name and number jerseys for football, because the Eagles used to wear them back in the day, and I grew up with those. This is actually the jersey, this is the jersey I grew up with with the Eagles. So when I say I'm an Eagles fan, since the, what, 92-93 season, this is the jersey that I grew up with. This is why. <laughs> So, anyhow, Broncos, Tom Jackson, that's actually a more, but that was actually done some years ago, so that's not like one of the new, new China runs, it's actually one that came out, you know, uh, a few years prior, so that's a little bit of an older China run, if that makes any sense. All right, let's move on. Uh, these next two, uh, this is El Salvador. This is an El Salvador run, this is an older run. I'm gonna take my hat off, it's getting a little hot. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always have to towel down. Actually, I have a towel, so it's actually going to be a lot hotter this week. So I thought I'd be kind of safe filming this video now instead of waiting till later in the week when it's just ugh. so. But um, some people might never have realized they made this jersey. This is a Ronnie Lot 1994 New York Jets jersey by Mitchell and this, and this is in a this is a uh, El Salvador run, and again, it's all pressed on. Hard to get this one. Uh, I've, I've wanted this for years. And the funny thing is I got the Boomer Esiason one first. And I always wanted the Ronnie Lott, you know, version of it. And when I was able to get it, I was real excited. And, of course, I was able to pair them up, combo them up 
But this is the Ronnie lot. And yes, there are fakes of it out there, so you want to be careful. The thing that gives it away is if it's stitched. If the numbers are stitched and it's claiming to be a Mitchell Ness, the white Ronnie Lott jersey, no. <laughs> it's supposed to be pressed. Take a look at the pressing. Just like on the Eagles jersey, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how the Jets wore it in 94. And it is, of course, the NFL 75th, which I have quite a few of these jerseys from this year. The 75th jersey. Got the jock tag. 1994 and all the jock tags are going to be different just depending on where the jersey was made as you see here it just has the year some jerseys will have the player name and team in some cases and year like a lot on there but some of them just have the year it just depends on who made it um real nice jersey i definitely recommend this if, if you ever if you're a jersey head jets fan anything like that you, you you want to get your hands on this one it's a nice one uh and the same deal here this is the boomer Esiason. And this one's actually, this is a USA run. And you can always tell the USA runs by the deep inside uh, Mitchell Ness tag. This is, a, again, this is a USA. So the Ronnie Lott was an El Salvador run. This one's a USA run from back in the day. And, of course, they made his Bengals jersey, too, and uh, his Jets. So, of course, with this one, now this one still has, this one also just has the year. It just depends on the year these are made. Some of them will have the full name team everything and some of them will just have the year but again it's the 94 so it has the 75th turn it around a size and seven and everything again is pressed on nothing is stitched so if you ever see this jersey on ebay and it's stitched claiming to be a mitchell ness no <laughs> believe me i had to learn that too when i first started collecting i didn't know i didn't know there was anything i didn't know there was any fake jer fake jersey what's that i had to learn you know so believe me, it, it comes with time. It comes with just getting knowledge from fellow Jersey heads, you know. So uh, next off, let's go with let's go with a newer run. This is a China run. This is more of a new jersey that came out, I think, within the last year or so. This is the Terrell Owens uh, 49ers jersey, and they just got his rights not long ago. So they made this one and they made his Dallas jersey. They didn't make his Eagles jersey yet. This is, you know, you know the one team he went to the Super Bowl with, you know. <laughs> uh, 1996 Terrell Owens now they made the Jerry Rice in the home and away in this one but for T.O. obviously so far they've only done the the uh the home really nice jersey though I really like the the drop shadow and everything on the Niner jerseys I've always been a fan of that when they had those and of course this big logo just pops and me along with a lot of other collectors it's flair that's what we call this flair Love little the anniversary patches, all-star game, World Series, Super Bowl, whatever. Something, a patch like this on a jersey, it's like moths to a flame. So I think they did a nice job with this jersey overall. Uh, it's a pretty solid jersey. Like I said, it's a newer China run, but I like it. And I uh, had a chance to get it, and so I did. Not, uh, I think I got this earlier in the year, if I'm not mistaken. All right, let's move on here. I'm gonna just try, I'm gonna just kind of you know pick and choose here. I'm not gonna show every single thing. I'm just picking and choosing. Uh, and this one here, I want to make sure I got the the origin right. This is in El Salvador. Now, tell me, who do you think this is? Just by seeing the number. Okay, you're wrong. It's not Eric Dickerson. <laughs> A lot of people will look at this jersey and see Rams jersey number 29, and think it's uh it's an Eric Dickerson. But if you notice, the numbers are stitched. And E.D., of course, when he was there, his, the numbers were pressed. So this is an older Rams jersey of a number 29. And there you see the year, and there you see the name, Harold Jackson. Los Angeles Rams, 1974. And see, here's an example. This is an El Salvador run. Here's an example where you see the whole name and team and everything. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, it just ran the gamut. Sometimes it just had the year. Sometimes they had just a player. Sometimes they had everything on there. Here's an example where everything is on this jersey. Really nice quality jersey. Old school Mitchell and Ness. El Salvador run. Harold Jackson. There's a lot of fakes of this out there. So sometimes just the tag is to tell if it's authentic or not. And sometimes you just have to do a little more homework. I had to do a little more homework with this. 
I had to ask around if this was legit or not, and indeed it was, so I picked it up. Actually, I forget. I may have gotten this from, from a collector, actually. I may have picked this off from another collector, if I'm not mistaken. Sometimes the old brain doesn't want to work all the time. So I think I did get this from a fellow collector, actually. I didn't get this on eBay. Now that I, now that I remember now, the light bulb went off. Ding! See, I should stand near the light. Ding! So this one is stitched, Jackson, and the 29 is double-stitched. Really nice material uh, for the ram horns and for the 29. I just love that old cut. You know, some of the Mitchell Ness jerseys with that old cut is just insane. You got the mesh going inside. Just the detail of the old stuff. Really, really nice. And another reason why a lot of collectors like me kind of look for the old stuff too. Um, just for the detail aspect. Yeah, I know. I got to wipe down again. <laughs> um... Next up, you know, this is another nice one. This is, uh, this is a newer run, but these are getting harder to find, so I was glad to get one of these. In fact, I got an awesome deal with this, and I actually got this from Mitchell and Ness, um, one of the workers there, because the name on the back was upside down. It was actually a screw-up jersey, but so I got dirt cheap. And I sent it off to Patsy Elmer, Big Time Jerseys, and she corrected it. She put it on the right side the, the way it should be. So this is a Larry Zonka, Miami Dolphins. This is a 19, uh, 1972, yep, 72 Dolphins. And it is a new China run, but this is a real nice jersey. It almost harkens to their older stuff. And it's very plain, you know, nothing, no real bells and whistles, no patches, no stripes even. But there's just something about this jersey that just pops. I love the colors with the white. It just really looks nice. Zonka, and there you see how it was correctly put on. It was This was upside down. The nameplate was stitched on upside down for whatever reason. And so I got real cheap and I sent it off. And Patsy Elmer, shout out to Patsy Elmer, Big Time Jerseys. Uh, they corrected it. It's actually the first uh, thing I ever got from Big Time Jerseys. So, you know, first work, I should say, from Big Time Jerseys. It's a very simple project. But, you know, they came represent, uh, uh, recommended by my buddy Big Slim. And uh, so there you go. The Larry Zonka 1972. This is, again, a China run, a newer run. But, again, these are getting harder to get. I know they made uh, him and uh, Greasy. And uh, that's the Zonka. I'm going to towel down again. <laughs> um, I should just have, like, like wear the towel, like Cam Newton or something, you know? Just <laughs> um, so let me get into this a little more. Ah, all right. This one actually came from Big Baby. <laughs> I got this one off of Big Baby. And uh, this is a, um, a, this yeah, made in China, but this is an older China run. Okay, so this isn't the new one. You notice the, the tagging is a little different, so this is an old one. Uh, this is a John Elway, 1994 Away. Shout out to Big Baby, holding it down in the Big D. Well, the D, I should say the Big D's Dallas. The D, Detroit. <laughs> The big D. Boy, that was a slip. Dallas. He's <laughs> an Eagles fan, right? Holding it down in Detroit and Motown, of course, I should say there. Uh, but this is a John Elway, of course, 1994. This is the Away White. Older China run. Really nice jersey. Really sharp. like the colors in this. Everything's double-stitched for the numbers, but the stripes are pressed. NFL... Like I said, I got a lot of these. NFL 75th shield on there. Elway 7 on the back. And let's hit you with that old China Jock tag, which does have the name, the team, and the year. They were very thorough. <laughs> back then with... And like I said, some of them will have that, and some of them will just have the year. It just it depends on the year it was made and whatnot, the place it was made, who knows. But um, anyhow, yeah. Elway... Broncos, and another one that you see faked a lot, so just got to be careful. And, of course, a little NFL shield there. Just got to be careful with it, but, uh, you know, this one came from a fellow collector, so I know I'm good. And shout out again to Big Baby for this uh, those years ago. He actually gave me a hat with it, too, so there you go. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite hats, hat styles, is those old hats that people used to wear with these jerseys, the pinwheel you know, multicolored hats, the fitted hats, and I love those hats. And Big Baby was nice enough to put one in, the, in a, a Bronco one 
in the uh, in the package for me with it so that was cool of him to do that um let's see i just want to show a couple more here and uh yeah let's get into this one this is a curious one <laughs> the player was pretty forgettable but the, see this is an example of a, of a jersey that mitchell ness made back then just because it was just a, everyone was buying jerseys it was a hot thing to do they were pumping them out left and right and so they made a jeff george falcons jersey <laughs> but it's a hot looking jersey uh you know the player may not have had much of a great career but they did make his jersey uh for the falcons and against the 94 season so it's got the 75th number one is double stitched as well in the shoulders but the stripes are pressed right onto the material it's a hot jersey no and uh this is a uh, usa run again you can tell by that deep tag on the inside and you got the Jock, 1994. George, number one, on the back. All stitched on the nameplate. Heavy jersey, too. And, and that's the thing. Some of these jerseys made back then are heavy. So you can't really wear them. Like, this is a little lighter. So I can kind of get away with this now. But this one, no. It's too heavy to wear this time of year. And, of course, most of the, when you wear football jerseys, it's football season. Anyhow, it's in the fall, the winter, cooler weather. So these heavy jerseys, yeah. Might not be able to get away with it now, but you can get away with it more in the winter and in the in the fall months. Um, all right, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with a few more here. And since this is always a popular one, now they made a couple runs of this. They made an older run with a different year, and then they made the creamsicle. This is uh this is the more newer run. And I was just talking to a guy today on uh, Facebook uh, Messenger about you know why Mitchell Ness never made a Leroy uh, Selman Buccaneers jersey. I don't want to sweat through this thing, but <laughs> why they never made a Leroy Selman jersey, and I don't have an answer for that. Of course, Leroy was one of the great players in Buccaneers history, a Hall of Famer, I believe, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Um, great career, and they never made his jersey. But some players, it was harder for them to get the rights to make the jersey of. Some players, maybe they made because they thought it would sell better. You never know the reasoning for it, but it's kind of, it is one of those questions. Why they didn't make certain players, why they made certain players, but it is what it is. But they did make the Doug Williams. They made a couple Doug Williams. This one, though, I really, and I like both of them, but this one I really like because it is more of the traditional creamsicle. Uh, this is also an, a newer China, but it's a few years old, so um, it's not as available as it once was. And it is, like I said, the more traditional creamsicle. The other one they made was uh, from an, uh, an older year, and it was not quite creamsicle. It was more of a burnt orange. <laughs> and I'll show that one in a future in a future vid. But and that was the original run Doug Williams Bucks that they made. This, of course, being the newer one, and it's from the 1979 season. You see the newer jog tag on there. Everything's pressed on. And just the colors just pop on this one. You know, again, this is more of when you think of the creamsicle Bucks jerseys, this is what you think of. So, yeah, a lot of people had the Doug Williams jersey back then. I remember the Doug Williams jersey being a big one. You know, certainly his Buccaneers. They made his Redskins, too. They made the Super Bowl one, too, with the Redskins. But, you know, obviously the, the creamsicle, that's what everyone goes for. All right, I'm just going to show about two more. Uh, I'm going to show, I'm going to show, yeah, I'm going to show, uh, I'll show a couple more here. We'll keep with the 1994 season. So you had another 1994 season. This is Jim Everett, New Orleans Saints. And this one, too, with the deep inside tag. Where is it, boys and girls? Where is this one made? USA, yeah. <laughs> so this is the Jim Everett Saints. This is the Away Saints hot jersey, harder to get. Again, one of those that was, uh, you know, made back in the day. And uh, 75th, of course, anniversary. Everything double-stitched besides for the stripes. Turn it around. Everett is on a nameplate, but it's pressed on. And the 17 is double-stitched again on the back. Very nice jersey. Hot jersey. Definitely recommend it if you ever get a chance to own this one. Do so, because it's, it's a hot jersey. All right, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with two more here. Yeah, two more. Uh, this is the yeah, Terry Metcalf. 
Cardinals jersey. Okay. Very nice jersey. Uh, this was this is a made in Korea. Okay, very nice jersey. And I want to say this is the... I keep forgetting if this is the... Uh, okay, yes, it is. I had to check the, the chalk tag. The St. Louis Cardinals. People forget the Cardinals bounced around a little bit. They were the Chicago Cardinals, then the St. Louis Cardinals, the Arizona Cardinals, as they are now. But this is from the 19... Yeah, 1973 season. And it is... Uh, the St. Louis Cardinals, Terry Metcalf. He knows it is yellowing a little bit again. The Koreas, they did this, the white jerseys. This, believe it or not, I picked up on lids some years ago. It was like something they must have had back in a, st in a stock room somewhere. But they were doing a deal on uh, clearance items, and this was one of them. So it's like an order run Mitchell and S jersey. Okay. <laughs> uh, Terry Metcalf, of course, again, the St. Louis Cardinals. Everything is pressed on the nameplate. The numbers, you know, stripes, definitely a hot jersey. You notice the 21, a little different. There is no border. That's just how they wore it back then for the, for the numbers. But for the, uh, for the numbers on the front and back, it is. Terry Metcalf against St. Louis Cardinals. And finally here, this is definitely a head turner. This one... Um, and, and I note, and, and I, I, I do note that it's a bit of a mistake jersey because the Rams did wear press numbers up for that for this particular jersey. Mitchell Ness made them stitched, but it is what it is, right? But it's still a hot jersey, a sought after one. This is the '94 Jerome Bettis throwback Rams jersey, the yellow with the blue lettering and stripes. And I remember my buddy uh, Big Slim had this. And another buddy of mine, uh, 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 D, aka Peter Tom Willis, on on the groups on Facebook, had this, and I, and I, but twice I've, I I I I saw Big Slim in this in person once, and I saw uh, D in this in person once, and I was the last to get this of the group. Okay, so <laughs> I actually had a shot to get one once, and I didn't. I got I got a Jordan jersey instead, but then of course years later I was able to pick this up and. So, yeah, now, now all of us have it. So <laughs> it's definitely one that you will see from time to time. It is one that gets faked. So you got to be a little careful with it. But it's a hot jersey. It just is. Real nice. Again, shield. The numbers, sing, single stitch. They should be pressed. In fact, big. <laughs> uh, uh, Slim's getting it corrected. So, you know, I, I'm just going to keep it as is, though. You know, keep it original. But... Shout out to him. 94, again, just the year on there. And Shield on the front. Bettis, 36 on the back. And, of course, the stripes are pressed on. Very, very hot jersey. So there you go. A little collection of stuff, football-wise. Uh, all Mitchell and Ness. Various years, various countries of origin that made the jerseys. You'll, you'll kind of run the gamut here. I got to towel down again. <laughs> I should, I should have just taken these jerseys down to the basement and filmed down there where it's a little cooler, right? You, you would think that I, I would have... Well, anyhow, we're moving along. So um, just a little collection for all of you. And again, if you're not familiar with the older run Mitchell and Ness uh, football jerseys, well, now you got to see some of them. Um, again, there, there are a lot of fakes out there, so you want to be careful. There's some telling signs. I still don't know all the telling signs, and I've been collecting for over 15 years but some things give it away. Sometimes the jock tag will give it away. Obviously, some of the easy things to look for is if it's supposed to be pressed like this Cunningham jersey. And if it's stitched numbers and it's claiming to be a Mitchell Ness with the JB Memorial, it's not. <laughs> Sorry to say, it should be heat pressed like this. A lot of the teams that had the heat pressing jerseys, you'll, you'll, note, you'll, you'll see that. Uh, again, you learn by collecting, you learn by doing, and I've been doing this for over 15 years. Like I said, I have a lot of, a lot of jerseys in the collection. Oh God. No, oh, and today's not even a hot day, <laughs> but heat rises. I'm on the second floor here and I don't have the air conditioner on because I didn't really need it this weekend. It was, it was nice. Beautiful, beautiful day. I, I can't complain too much. Low humidity and all, you can't tell by the sweat, but low humidity uh, but anyhow, moving on, it, there are things that you, you, you know, at, you, you learn by doing and you learn from fellow collectors. 
um, you know, the best advice that I can always give is join one of the groups. And there's a lot of groups on Facebook. Uh, I know there's, um, you know, Jersey's Kicks and Lids, of course, Big Slim's group, Kings of Throwbacks, of course, Snacks' group. Just a lot of groups on there. And I know a lot of us used to film here on YouTube, and, and, and a lot of us seem to have merged, you know, uh, uh, picked up shop and moved the Facebook <laughs> on the groups on there and then some of us you know still do film on on youtube and that's fine i i try to i know big slim big baby uh, a lot of you guys you know still do but you know it certainly isn't what it was at one point where all of us were all on youtube all the time and now of course there's facebook groups and everything and you know and of course life happens too but um it's just a sample of the collection there's a lot. I probably won't be able to show everything I have, but like I said, I, I I think from time to time, you know, maybe I'll do this like once a week or something. Just put put out a video where I'm showing some jerseys and, you know, reminiscing a little bit, you know, about the old days and about the old jerseys and some of the memories that some of them have with me, you know, where I collected them and 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 you know the meaning behind some of them. Some of them were very difficult to get, and one in particular took a very long time for me to get that rookie Dion red. Yeah, I have a history with that one. <laughs> and when I got it, it was so special. And that's certainly one that will be in one of my upcoming videos. Um, so anyhow, as I as I have to just uh, go back downstairs where it's a little cool. Even with the fan, it does nothing. Nothing. So I'm just going to move on from here. But thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you hope you enjoyed this. If I opened some eyes to some of these jerseys and some of the history, you know that Mitchell and Ness used to do, uh, that's all the more, you know, all the more better. Um, you know, hey, as Jersey heads, sometimes we like to educate too, and show some of the old stuff and give love to the old, you know, the old run stuff. Obviously, it's some one of the things that we collect. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. And I'll see you around the channel. I don't know what my next video will be. It'll either be a Philly sports fan video or the Phillies collection where it's cooler downstairs. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I will be around the channel again soon. So keep an eye out and uh, hope you all enjoyed this little trip down memory lane with Mighty Fan. All right, everyone. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you around the channel. Bye.